court convicts Rappler CEO and executive editor Maria Ressa and former Rappler researcher writer Reynaldo Santos Jr. for cyber libel Monday, June 15. The court, led by Judge Reynelda Montesa, sentences Ressa and Santos to a minimum of six months and one day to a maximum of six years in jail. Ressa and Santos are entitled to post-conviction bail while they exhaust legal remedies in higher courts like the Court of Appeals and the Supreme Court. The two journalists are also ordered to pay complainant Wilfredo King 400,000 pesos in damages. The trial was over in only eight months, possibly the fastest libel trial in recent history. Rappler in a statement says the verdict sets a dangerous precedent not only for journalists but for everyone online. The decision today marks not the rule of law, but the rule of law twisted to suit the interests of those in power who connive to satisfy their mutually beneficial personal and political agenda. In convicting Rappler journalists, the court affirms republication makes for a separate libel offense and cyber libel's prescription period is 12 years. Judge Reynelda Estacio Montesa in her decision says Rappler's correction on a typographical error in February 2014 is considered republication. Journalists say the ruling will impact reporting using confidential sources. It does not discuss how to treat confidential sources. Instead, it faults Rappler for quote-unquote not verifying. Santos says he still stands by his story. 2012 yung story. Uh, it's been uh, it's been eight years since lumabas yung story. Uh, and um, I still stand by my story. Courage means if someone powerful comes after you to tell you to take down a story, that you don't just blindly take it down, that you double check, that you triple check, because it is also it could be a way to intimidate you. In a statement, the Consortium on Democracy and Disinformation says the language of the decision proved that the court failed to understand how journalism works and what its role in the democratic setting is. The group also belies Montesa's claim that Maria's title, executive editor, is a clever ruse, calling it one of many microaggressions. DND says we wish Judge Montesa could have reminded herself to use Google. The top editors of the New York Times, the Washington Post, the Philippine Daily Inquirer, and many other newspapers and news sites around the world are called executive editor. Filipinos online say the guilty verdict in Rappler's high-profile cyber libel case is, quote, a tragedy for Philippine democracy. Other reactions? It's trampling on democracy. Sef Pilapil posts on Facebook, Mark this day when press freedom and democracy took a thousand cuts by those in power. Journalism professor Sheila Coronel tweets Monday, The justice system in the Philippines has been weaponized versus press freedom. UN Special Rapporteur for Human Rights Agnes Calamard calls the verdict a travesty of justice, a tragedy for the Philippines. Journalist Karen Davila calls this day a sad day for democracy. Hashtag defend press freedom, hashtag hold the line, hashtag I stand with Maria Ressa, hashtag courage on, and Rappler trends on Twitter on Monday, June 15. Meantime, the College Editors Guild of the Philippines condemns the verdict saying the conviction adds to the number of cases of harassment, censorship, and threats among journalists under President Duterte's administration. Embattled media network ABS-CBN also joins calls to uphold press freedom and freedom of speech in the country. Meantime, the Makati Business Club, Bishop's Businessmen's Conference for Human Development, Filipina CEO Circle, and Judicial Reform Initiative says, The verdict threatens our other rights and freedoms, which are woven together to serve and protect society, especially the most vulnerable. Vice President Lenny Robredo in a statement says, Silencing, harassing, and weaponizing law against the media sends a clear message to every dissenting voice. Keep quiet or you are next. Senator Kiko Pangininan says it would have been more surprising if Reza and Santos were acquitted. Albay Representative Edsa Lagman says the conviction is, quote, a tragic commentary on the judiciary succumbing to the repressive campaign of Malacanang. Human Rights Watch, meantime, says the verdict highlights the ability of the Philippines' abusive leader to manipulate the laws to go after critical, well-respected media voices. U.S. Defense Secretary Mark Esper assures Philippine Defense Secretary Delfin Lorenzana the U.S. would share developments on vaccines and therapeutics for COVID-19. In a phone call, Esper also thanks the Philippines for suspending the termination of the Visiting Forces Agreement, or VFA, of the Philippines and the U.S. The U.S. is the Philippines' oldest military ally, but President Rodrigo Duterte steered a pivot to China as soon as he assumed office in 2016. The U.S. promise of a vaccine comes after Chinese President Xi Jinping promised to make the Philippines a priority once they have developed the vaccine.
In related news, 9 in 10 Filipinos are stressed due to the coronavirus pandemic. In a survey conducted by social weather stations on May 4 to 11, stress was highest in Visayas at 63%, followed by Metro Manila at 58%, Mindanao at 55%, and Balance to Son at 51%. The pollster also finds out 58% of those who said they are stressed have jobs but are not receiving pay. 57% of those surveyed lost their jobs during the pandemic, while 16.7% experienced involuntary hunger due to lack of food. The survey was conducted through computer-assisted telephone interviews. Special Advisor to the Government Task Force for COVID-19, Dr. Tony Liachin says, Forgive me. I think the lead agency has lost focus in everything. Risk communication, priorities, data management, and execution of all plans. The criticism came before the task force submits its recommendation to President Rodrigo Duterte. In another tweet, Liachon commends the task force for working hard, but expresses frustration with a lack of sense of urgency of the DOH leadership and data management. As of Monday, June 15, there are 26,420 cases of coronavirus in the country. Of this, 348 are fresh and 142 are late. The Philippines also records 1,098 deaths and 6,252 recoveries. This figure is well above the estimate of experts and scientists from the University of the Philippines. They predicted there will be 24,000 cases of COVID-19 in the country if lockdown measures were lifted early in May. Women speak out to shut down the misconception outfits are to blame for sexual assault. Hashtag Iha Ako trends Sunday, June 14 as Frankie Pangilinan uses it to counter a statement by TV anchor Ben Tulfo about rape. The exchange happened after the Lukban Municipal Police Station posted on Facebook Thursday, June 11. You girls, on the other hand, should not wear excessively short clothes that when you're harassed, you come to us for help. The daughter of megastar Sharon Cuneta and Senator Kiko Pangilinan reacts to the news. Stop teaching girls how to dress. Teach people not to rape. Tufo then calls Frankie Iha as if talking down to her. A rapist or a juvenile sex offender's desire to commit a crime will always be there. Sexy ladies, careful with the way you dress up. You are inviting the beast. The TV anchor also posts on Facebook, Before we change them for the better, we should first change our way of thinking. Do you get it, child? To this, Frankie replies, The way anyone dresses should not be deemed as opportunity to sexually assault them ever. Calling me Iha will not belittle my point. She tweets the hashtag Iha Ako to reclaim the term to refer to girls who fight for their rights as human beings. Women quickly back Pangilinan's points by using the hashtag to share the real incidents of harassment to the curb because of men's behavior, not because of their outfits. A user shares how women wear long-sleeved uniforms with sando and knee-length skirts with stockings and cycling shorts, but they still experience catcalling. Another user sums it all up. Rape exists because of rapists. Period. In Atlanta, Georgia, a fatal shooting of a black man by a white police officer pours more fuel on a raging debate over racism. Reports say Rayshard Brooks was asleep in his car and had allegedly failed a sobriety test. Police officers tried to arrest him when a struggle broke out. Videos of the incident show two white police officers wrestling Brooks to the ground in the parking lot. A restaurant surveillance video shows Brooks turn and appear to fire the taser at the officers. An officer reaches for a service weapon and as Brooks turns back, the weapon goes off. The anger over Brooks' death led to protesters setting on fire the restaurant where 27-year-old was killed. Activists all over the U.S. have since taken up defund the police as a rallying cry, denouncing police brutality and abuse. United States President Donald Trump, who turned 74 Sunday, June 14, blames a very slippery ramp for his unsteady appearance at West Point after delivering the commencement address to graduating cadets. A video circulated on social media showing him wobbly and unsteady draws mockery and criticism. He tweets, The last thing I was going to do is fall for the fake news to have fun with. Final 10 feet, I ran down to level ground. Momentum. Filipinos praised director Ramona Diaz's documentary, A Thousand Cuts, for portraying the eye-opening realities of Philippine democracy and press freedom under President Rodrigo Duterte. The documentary followed Rappler CEO Maria Ressa, Rappler reporters Ram Butalabong, Pierre Anada, and Patricia Evangelista, and several key government officials, including Bato de la Rosa, Mocha Uson, and then senatorial candidate Samir Gutok as a campaign during the 2019 midterm elections. A Thousand Cuts gained around 233,000 views on YouTube in the 24 hours it was available for streaming. Ressa and hashtag A Thousand Cuts also trended on Twitter Saturday afternoon, June 13. User Mick Vergara tweets, It is a difficult, often painful watch that reminds us all how we let things get this bad and how difficult the jobs of journalists truly are. A Twitter user says the documentary is not just about Rappler. It reflects the situation of every journalist who speaks for truth. Artist Bullet Dumas expresses his admiration for Ressa, who says he is the main reason he speaks up. (laughs) 